Hello and welcome to the fifth and final day of Blizzard at Gamescom. What? Oh, I, I, I get... Is that offensive? I mean, he's like this short little fat hairy. What an amazing final day we have here at Gamescom. We've got World of Warcraft dungeon runs happening on the stage. I love WoW, it's great to see it being played. It is indeed, and we're also gonna play StarCraft 2 for you guys, so that's gonna be amazing. We've also got the Heroes of the Storm Brawl Mania tournament, featuring teams from all over Europe competing for prize. It's, it's gonna be a good one. It is indeed, so it's gonna be a busy one and I kinda have to go, so cheers love. <laughs> How do that? Does that work? Cheers, loves. played Heroes of the Storm and found you don't have a healer on your team? Well, then you might be part of Team Knights, which is made up entirely of tanks. We've got themed teams here from Team Marine, Team Alien, Team Wizards and Team Knights, who are all competing against one another in a special game mode tournament called Brawl Mania. The nuke is it's there, double nuke being used, only the outside once again. Hey, Team Knights, Team Knights, just quickly, guys. How are you feeling? Are you going to win this one? Of course, look at us. Guys, it's even immediately turned on by the knight and deleted by Dalukard with the Dwarf Toss. Okay, I'm here with Team Alien. They are literally just about to go on. Good luck, guys, good luck. They're my pick, they're my favorites, okay? They don't have a healer. They've got a support in the form of Abatha. It might do enough. We're going to find out now. There's still a double one here, but here comes the Duke from Abafa to try and end the game! It comes down, it's too late, and there's the GG! Abafa with the backdoor Duke to win the game! Man of the match, Abafa himself. Um, How do you feel it went? I feel very excited, um, I, could, I can't believe it. And also, man, that plays uh, the Valdom lane versus Ab Artas, man, was crazy. Burn up into Rub's beard! With the slap. So basically the idea we had is that because in, I don't think we could win in straight up compositions like in a straight up fight. Because we were kind of afraid to go against so many tanks uh, and they do a lot of damage as well and a healer. We don't really have a healer, only like support. Yeah, we figured if we go for a split push build on Zagara and grab the experience and therefore, you know, hopefully get the, um, the lead on the level. We should eventually be able to overpower him and that's exactly what happened, so. We won, we're going home with a freaking trophy. <laughs> So StarCraft 2 consists of many different modes and play styles since Legacy of the Void. We got those co-op missions and that's what we're going to focus on today. Yep. So of course I got myself a partner, Matt Morris from the StarCraft 2 development team. Matt, thank you so much for joining me. So glad to be here. Uh, today we're going to play uh, Core Hall Rifts and we're going to play Alrak, our new commander. So let's Do have... I get to play him? You get to play I Alrak. I get to play him. Yes. Good. Perhaps now we can move on to a real fight. I almost died here. Uh -oh. There are enemies in case, <laughs> in case you're wondering. Oh yeah. Then again, I shouldn't have gone in there. To... Who is that guy? Alrak is the Taldarim High Lord. Uh, he's going to command powerful Taldarim units. Uh, he's an aggressive commander, and he's going to get himself in trouble in the battlefield, as all these heroes do. Um, and what makes him unique is that every time he gets in trouble, he will sacrifice one of his units by <laughs> him. That's such an Alarak thing to do. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> like that really goes very into Taldarim. his. Uh, with his character. Uh, who are you playing then? Are you like... Uh, I'm going to play Artanis. Okay, is that supporting Alaric? Like. That, <laughs> that's great, thank you. <laughs> what? What's been the worst ever happening to you during a mission? You know, there is a, a particular AI build that I always struggle with, which is the, uh, the Terran air units, the Liberators that come in. I don't know what it is about them, but those guys are always just make it very difficult for me. Um, on brutal difficulty, they can be really challenging. So, if I lose a mission, it's usually because it's playing against them. I am here in the shadows. So, 
What kind of support and like new content can we expect for co-op missions in the future? Um, well, we're, we're we have more commanders in the pipeline. Um, we also have uh, more missions coming out too. Uh, we also have a new mode that's going to be coming out shortly, which is custom mutation. Um, this is a, really an opportunity for players to create their own unique experience in co-op. Um, we might have an example of a mutator that makes all the enemy cloaked. And so you might run into a map and everybody shows up cloaked. Like you have to have protection. <laughs> Uh, we have other ones where uh, just random nukes are dropping from the sky. You know, as we talk about these new features for co-op this year, uh, is really how to continue to support the community. You know, we get a lot of feedback. They want to see this map or they want this commander. Um, you know, going into next year, we want to continue uh, to push this game forward. Okay, sweet. So we have a lot to look forward to, don't we? Absolutely. <laughs> One second. <laughs> I got a pirate ship to take care of. I can't do an outro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nothing worse than pirates and traitors. Hello everyone, my name is Loco and I play all Blizzard games, but my favorite one has to be StarCraft 2. I've been playing Zerk for about six years right now, but I recently picked up Random, so I'm playing all three races right now. For today's eSports special, we have something truly special. We've already seen fantastic competitive play from the Overwatch and Heroes tournaments with amazing show matches from Hearthstone and StarCraft II. But today, we're going to see World of Warcraft dungeon runs in a timed race against the clock. This is what, what's, what's motivating you now for this third match. Well, we want to show that we are good, that we can also maybe beat them a third time. We used to watch the BlizzCon events, the Gamescom events, like one or two or three years ago. And now to be there is just really an honor and we are all we are really proud to be there today. This is actually one of the most challenging dungeons. Biggest problematic in Aqua is if you wipe, you have to walk a really, really long time. So basically, if you wipe, you probably lose this race. What do you guys see as the future for this? Do you want to be back here next time? Oh, we would love to come back. Um, there's going to be more dungeons, I think, so um, we'll probably do Mythic Plus in the guild as well, try to like push that, so I'd be really excited to come back. We are celebrating this, the 20th anniversary of Diablo. And in honor of that, I wanted to let you know what I think are, for me, the five most important cool things about the Diablo music. First off, the music for Diablo is unexpected. Instead of typical Hollywood sound, you hear 12-string guitars, flutes, and other things, which have been arranged in a way that had never been heard before. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Secondly, the music to Diablo is effective. People remember it, but it doesn't draw undue attention to itself. It immerses you in the game, it immerses you in the, in the mood and the sense of adventure and the creepiness of it, all with these sounds that you hadn't heard before. Next up, it's worth mentioning that the music for Diablo is virtually handmade. Matt Ullman did the entire score himself, playing all the instruments, the guitars, the flutes, and all the samples. I believe the Diablo music is pioneering. Not only was it done by pretty much one person, 
it used tools that were really new at the time, samples and things like that to flesh out the music that was centered around the guitar and the flutes and other live instruments. So he combined live instruments all the way up to Diablo 2X where he began to use orchestras. So it's one of the first games to use a live orchestra. And finally, the music to Diablo is iconic. Even if they're a hardcore gamer or person who loves the story, they know the Diablo music. And this was borne out by the fact that when we announced Diablo 3 in Paris several years ago, I had a guitarist come out on stage. He played one 12 string guitar chord and the whole place knew exactly what we were talking about. And I can't think of any other game on the planet that could have achieved that. All right, guys, it's happening. The fifth and final day is coming to an end, and I'm super happy that we had the chance to be here, so, and I'm also so <laughs> upset that it's over already. It's going to be the Bastion Animated Short all over again. Oh, God, it's don't emotional. Get started. It's yeah. this amazing, phenomenal week we've had. So many epic moments. Oh, it's just, and it's, it's, it's over. It's, it's bittersweet. Don't rub it in, no, man. I know, it's I know, really, it's I know. Really tough, but yeah. The frustrating it. thing now is we've got, from now, Till you know, Legion on August 30th, <laughs> Machines of War September 13th. The way. We've got to wait. Yeah. Oh, no, I want to keep playing. <laughs> but we really hope we can fill the wait in case you missed out on any of the action we are here on stage and off stage. Just head over to gamescom.blizzard.com. You can find everything right there on that hub. So uh, I think that should entertain you for quite some hours. Yeah, next stop, BlizzCon. Can't wait. God, it's going to be good again. Ah. Yeah, we have so much ahead of us, so much to look forward to. We very much hope you guys enjoyed the show here. And I guess all there is left to say is cheers, cheers loves. Cheers, loves.